morning, boys and girls. Mrs. Kogan. Let's all say uh, hi to uh, our family friends here. We have Connor and <clears throat> everyone together. Hi, Connor. <clears throat> hi, Neela. Hi, Robert. Hi, Avery. Hi, Mark. And Leah. So we're in the year 2021. And can you believe our calendar dates back <clears throat> to the time of Christ's birth? It's amazing. So it's been 2021 years since Christ was born. All right, I want you to <clears throat> know this song, and I want you to be able to sing this song in the mornings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good morning, Jesus. This day's for you. It's all I think, all I say, and all I do. Good morning, Jesus. This day's for you. It's all I think, all I say, and all I do. It's a nice song, boys and girls, when you wake up. It's a nice song to come into the kitchen and sing to the rest of the family. All right, so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Bless yourself in the morning. Sing your song or say a little prayer to God and bless yourself again. And you're set for the day. And think of... Think of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, your guardian angel, your saints. Think of them during the day, boys and girls, just for a second. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, blessed mother. Guardian angel, thank you for protecting me. Just those little thoughts take you all through the day. And then at the end, we'll sing the same song, but we'll sing it for nighttime. All right, the church is going to celebrate this Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice. <clears throat> this picture. Now. Would you be able to tell your family all about this picture? What's going on? We've had it before. There's John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin. He's baptizing Jesus. This is the beginning of Jesus' public years, boys and girls. He's 30 years old, and he'll be with um, his apostles and, and spreading the uh the, his truth. She'll be preaching and teaching, healing for three years. You, you, you know who this is, the Holy Spirit. So we have, this is very significant. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in this picture. Now, this is your promise. So we're going to get out our promise first. The reason I love to put these lines here is that that's the voice of the Father. There were two times that God the Father spoke in the presence of Jesus, and everyone around him heard it. So this is the first time at the baptism. <clears throat> we have Jesus, God the Son, name of the Father, God the Father. This, these, this is the voice of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's like making the, the cross of Christ on ourselves and remembering what Christ did for us. So John the Baptist is baptizing. Jesus comes along. <clears throat> but during the baptism, God the Father's voice says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Everyone around heard that. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to turn our page. And it brings us to our baptisms. Now, this is very interesting. Her name is Sarah. She becomes part of Jesus' family. Now, notice she's not a baby. Most of us were babies when we were baptized into the Catholic faith. But Sarah looks like she's about our age. It says, Father Jim helps Sarah to the baptismal font. Font. Everybody's font, everybody's font uh, every church's font is a little different, boys and girls, but notice St. Joseph on the Brandywine. It's toward the back of the church as we go out. Oh, my heavens. It, um, so here we are. Um, Sarah is, is, is um, Father's pouring water over Sarah's head and saying, Sarah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those are the words. Now Sarah puts on a white garment. She receives a lighted candle as a sign for the light of Jesus. Now at our baptisms as a baby, <clears throat> our godfathers hold the candle. Here, Sarah herself, she's old enough. She's holding the candle. And she's wearing she's wearing a white garment. Oils, oh here's the oil. Sarah is a new Christian. Father Jim seals her with a gift. Oh, this is confirmation. She must be receiving her confirmation at the same time. With the gift of the Holy Spirit of confirmation. He marks a cross on her forehead with holy oil. But holy oil is also used, boys and girls, with the baptism ceremony. With the sacrament of baptism. And then again, in the back. And notice when, at the back of the church, um, St. Joseph on the Brandywine, we have the holy, holy oils back there. Look for them. Now, oh, she receives the First Communion. So Sarah is being brought into the church for the very first time with her baptism, confirmation, and First Communion. And Sarah's family all want their picture taken with her. It's very important to have pictures, boys and girls. So you can remember your, you can, you know, your families will get up. Have your families get up pictures of you. Um, they're very, very precious down through the years. I want you all to know also the date you were baptized. I want you to know your godparents, who else may have been there. Now, the question of the week. Imagine yourself at Jesus' baptism. What do you see and feel? So think about that when you're alone. Put images in your mind, boys and girls. Close your eyes and think of that. Think of an image of Jesus being baptized. But in this case, too, it's not just seeing and feeling, it's also hearing. What is it you, you, what is it you would have heard at Jesus' baptism? Family prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of baptism that makes us part of your family. Help us to treat one another with love and respect. Love and respect. The word of the week is baptism. Now, um... Go to pages 13 and 14 in your catechism handbook. So that's, here's 13. Again, all about baptism. We skip all around the book, boys and girls. They tell us what page to look. Praise and celebrate. Baptism is a sacrament. Now listen to each, each sentence. A sentence is a special, a sentence. A sacrament is a special sign of God's love. It gives you God's grace to make you holy. It helps you be more like Jesus. You become a child of God in baptism. You become a member of God's family, the church, the Catholic church. When you were baptized, the priest said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've all done crossword puzzles, have you? <clears throat> you have down, so you look for one down, you look for four down, then you look for two across and two across. If everything fits in, you have the right words. So that'll be nice to do with yourself, boys and girls, or if you need help, have your family help you. Oh, now this is a very important page. This is great. <clears throat> your baptism, your baptism was a happy day. Very, very happy day. Tell the story of your baptism. You're the one that has to know the facts of your baptism. The day I was baptized was, so you want the day of the day of the week, many times it's Sunday, and the date, I was blank old. Very important. God called me by name. My name is. This is this is very important. Your baptismal name. And the name you'll live out throughout your whole life. Your parents chose your, your name for you. They put a lot of effort and thought into it. And you want to know why they chose your name. Why they chose your first name. Why they chose your middle name. Um, I was baptized at. It's important to know where you were baptized. I was baptized by father. Or even a deacon. We have Deacon Michael in our church now. 
But if you've had a, a, a priest or a deacon, you know, you can fill that in. Deacon, deacons can't celebrate Mass, and they cannot, um, the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It must be, those two must be priests. But the deacons can help out in so many wonderful ways. It's terrific. My parents are, my godparents are. Do all of you know your godparents? Very, very important to know your godparents. And thank you for being godparents. And write them letters. Call them, you know. Um, they may be aunts and uncles. They may be close friends. So you want to acknowledge the fact that you're very grateful that they said yes to be godparents. Other people who shared my happy day were. So every, everybody's sheet is going to be different. This is very important. After you fill this out, you can you can cut this one out because you've already finished the back and put it on your refrigerator or put it in a very special place for if you have treasures like a little treasure box that you keep things in. Now on this on the last page, boys and girls, I cut this out. This, this you'll have you'll have this on your last page. <clears throat> no, Mike, I cut these out. It said we celebrate baptism. This is your last page of your promise book, and. It has the priest or the deacon. It has the baptismal font. It has you, the baby, or if you're older. It has mother, father. And then I just put a little bit of tape here. Because then it has a different image on the background. I think this is for your godmother and godfather. I taped mine because I was going to be holding it up for you. You can if you, you can move them around if they're if you can even take the baby off and put it in mother's arms coming up. You can put it in godmother's arms, but um, up, uh, here we are. Um, oh, I also want to. I I kept this loose because be, baptism. I think maybe during the baptism, like most babies arrive with their white garment already on them. Sometimes the church will give you a little white bib or a little white smock. But you usually always wear something white to show that your soul, boys and girls, is totally immaculate. The stain of original sin is removed at baptism. Our soul is just in a beautiful state at this point. We want to keep it that way all through life. The candle is usually in the hands of the Godfather. But you notice with Sarah's um, being a little older, she was uh, holding it herself. So cut these out and, and have fun with them. Do whatever you want to with them. They give you lots of little little things to do. All right. Now we have our rosary, boys and girls. We're on our, this is the uh, Luminous Mysteries, which is the public life of Christ. Now, Christ's public life began with his baptism. There's a beautiful tie-in between the baptism of Jesus and this is called his transfiguration. Can you say that? Transfiguration. Five syllables. Trans means to change. Figuration is like his his um, his person. His, his person is being changed. And what changed about Jesus was uh, <clears throat> Jesus is trans. The fourth mystery of light. Jesus is transfigured. He becomes startling white, boys and girls, like a shiny light. It's like a light, a light is shining through him. He brought James, Peter, and John up to a high mountain. Three of his apostles see Jesus shining with God's glory on Mount Tabor. Moses and Elijah are with him. Jesus I want to love you also. Oh, this is another tie-in I didn't even think about. We're going to be talking about Moses today, boys and girls. He lived years before Jesus was born, years. Elijah also lived many, many years before Jesus was born. Moses was the one that God gave the Ten Commandments to. Elijah was a great prophet. You'll hear about the prophets of the Old Testament. And here... Peter, James, and John actually see Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. And then God the Father's voice, this is the second time now, God the Father's voice comes down. And God the Father said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. 
two times in the Bible that God the Father spoke and those around him. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The transfiguration. That's a big word. We're transfigured. That's a noun. Transfigured being the verb. Jesus is transfigured. Okay, I have a little um, rosary book here. It's the Luminous Mysteries. And it goes through every bead. Now, our rosaries are 10 decades. So as we're praying the rosary, we're going to be um, having 10 different scenes. So this is the very first one. It says the transfiguration. Jesus, we know who these are. Peter, James, and John. They hiked to the top to be alone to pray. Jesus so many times went up mountains to pray by himself, and he brought his three apostles with him this time. As Jesus prays, his face and his clothes become bright as light. See how they use yellow there to show the brightness all around Jesus? And look at the, look at the apostles. They're, they're, it is so bright for them. Moses and Elijah appear. My heavens. Here they are, very alert. Moses is holding the Ten Commandments. Elijah has a very special cloak. When we get to Elijah, we'll talk about a special cloak. But here they are praying with Jesus. Jesus, Moses, and Elijah talk to one another. To honor them, Peter suggests making a tent for each one. It's really important in those days. Make a tent for each one of them. And right up there in that mountain. As Peter is speaking, a bright cloud overshadows the mountain. So here's the cloud coming, overshadowing the mountain. God speaks from the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. I think God is still saying that to us today. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. It's important to, to know the life of Jesus. And would we make the same decisions as Jesus? Jesus, what would you have us do in this situation? Peter, James, and John are very frightened. Look at them. Jesus says, now, uh, everything has ended. Jesus is back to his former self. Jesus says, rise and do not be afraid. Those are important words for us too, boys and girls. Don't be afraid. Just whenever you're in a fearful situation, call on Jesus. They see Jesus is now alone. Jesus is back with them. Okay, so that's the transfiguration. All right, so now we're going on to um, cards. These are our uh, cards we have, boys and girls, from the very first... Um, Way back when we we have them in your blue um, booklet, your through your blue three ring binder, and um, Avery, if you don't have yours yet, you you will be getting them. The rest of you plus Avery, you'll be having a, a second set of cards. So the second set of cards we'll be working on until you know April or so. Um, so it's important, boys and girls, for you to know the correct names of the images that you see in church. When we first go into church, not now during the um, COVID, the pandemic, the holy water fountain's here, but there's no holy water in it because we don't want anything spread. But this is the holy water font. Very important. It's good for us to have holy water at home too. We, make, we, we put our fingers in the holy water font, or now we make the sign of the cross as we're entering church. We're going to head toward a pew. We're not just going to head toward a bench or a chair. We're going to go to a pew. And we genuflect. We genuflect down on one knee when you get to the get to the pew. Look for the sanctuary lamp. Because the sanctuary lamp is going to lead us. Right, right next to the sanctuary lamp is going to be the tabernacle. Tabernacle. And that's where Jesus is, is um, housed, boys and girls, in the form of uh, Eucharistic host. 
there's always at least, there's always one host in the tabernacle where Jesus resides. And many, many times there's many hosts that have already been consecrated. We look for the crucifix. When we kneel down, we go into a pew, we kneel down, either continue looking at the tabernacle or cast your eyes on the crucifix and say, hi, hi, hi Jesus. This is Leah, hi, Jesus. This is Connor. Identify yourself to Jesus and tell Jesus you love him. Say, Jesus, I love you. And, and, and feel love, boys and girls. Feel that in your heart. You don't have to pray a lot of prayers. You can. But many times it's just, Jesus, I love you. And that's enough. And just sit there and quietly dwell on that. Coming up to our pews, we will have passed the, um, the Stations of the Cross. Beautiful in St. Joseph on the Brandywine. You'll see them in every Catholic church. But there are 14 scenes of Jesus as he's being led to his crucifixion. You'll see candles probably already lit by the time you get there. If you get to church early, you'll see the candles being lit. They're lit before every every Mass. And then they're extinguished at the end of Mass. You look at the altar. It's usually a beautiful cloth on the altar. So special, boys and girls. This is where Mass is going to be celebrated. The Ambo. Sometimes it's called a um, pulpit, Ambo. Uh, this is where the readings will be read. And our readings come from the Book of the Gospels. Oh, this is the New Testament. Book of the Gospels would always be the New Testament. But at Mass, we have an Old Testament. We have a responsorial psalm from the Old Testament. And then we usually have a New Testament from the um, St. Paul, one of his long letters, um, Acts of the Apostles. But then when we stand, when we stand, is the Gospels that we're hearing. And, and Jesus, when the priest or deacon reads the gospel. Here's the host that's going to be um, elevated at the um, consecration. And and truly and truly, it's like being transformed, being transfigured, being transformed into the body of body and blood of Christ. Usually it's put on a paten. So you don't want to just say plate. You want to say, no, this, this is the paten. Look for these images in church. You'll see the ciborium. So you'll see the lid off and many hosts in the ciborium. And then the ciborium will be brought down, distributed for Holy Communion. The chalice, the chalice, we don't say the cup, we say the chalice is where the um, wine, the wine is going to be changed into the blood of Christ. Cruets. We don't keep the wine after mass, boys and girls. The priest will priest right now. Wine isn't being distributed to the to the parishioners, but the priest will um, consume the wine. There's always bread and wine at mass, and you'll see um, Father carefully washing the chap the chalice before the end of mass. You'll see cruets. Cruets. This is where the wine is kept put put into the chalice. This is where water, there's a time at Mass where Father washes his hands. There's another time when the wine is poured into the chalice, a little bit of water goes in there too. Watch for these. That's a symbol of us being joined with Christ. Father will be wearing a chasuble, chasuble. And you have these words, being able to look at the words, you're good readers now, look at the word and be able to say chasuble. Different colors. Red would be very a very special, many times a celebration of a martyr. Many times, uh, like Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down, Father was wearing red. Um, you'll see him wearing purple. We saw that during Lent. Green, the ordinary time. We're entering the ordinary time now. Um, purple. White. This is a stole. Father will have this under his chasuble. All these garments have very special um, uh, meanings. Father will also always put a stole on when he hears your confession. Next year when you make your first confession and then for the rest of your life, you'll always notice the priest will put the stole around his shoulders for the confession. But he has it on also under his chasuble. This is a surplus. We don't see surpluses in our church. You do in many churches. 
um, the altar boys or the altar girls may have black on, and then this would be a surplus, kind of down to their waist. Our, our altar servers um, wear robes. So not during the pandemic now, but afterwards, boys and girls, it's wonderful for you to step up and say, you know, I'd like to be an altar server. I'd like to be an altar boy. I'd like to be an altar girl. You're right up there with the priest during mass. It's wonderful. A mitre, if a bishop comes to the church, uh, for, for confirmation, for example, if you have older brothers and sisters being confirmed, you'll notice a mitre. This is what he has on his head. But you might want to say a headgear. No, you say, oh, my golly, that's a beautiful mitre. People are very impressed. Monstrance. Adoration chapels, boys and girls. Many times we'll put the host in this beautiful, beautiful um, image called a monstrance. And people will pray. They'll kneel, they'll, genu they'll kneel on both knees coming into the church as the monstrance is exposed. And they kneel down. It's a quiet time. They kneel down and honor, honor Jesus. Sometimes we have it in our own church. Sometimes we have a special adoration chapel. St. Anne's, for example, in, in Wilmington. Altar bells. We don't hear altar bells in our church, but many churches you'll go to, you'll hear a bell. And it's always calling our attention. So when do you think bells are going to be rung? Before the consecration. Before the consecration. So, so look for that. They're usually lovely bells. Pretty bells. This is a thurible. I wouldn't have even have known this name myself. But it's good for us to know the names of everything. A thurible. This is when incense. And the incense is frankincense. This is when incense is uh, used for certain uh, ceremonies, certain masses. But the incense is put in the thurible. It's um, there's a it it's it, it, it's hot, and they have coals in there and put a little fan, frankincense in, and uh, but this and this priest will swing it many times, three times, three times, three times, swing it out around the altar. He may swing it toward the congregation, and it's called a thurible. So, oh, this is a confessional. Sometimes churches have. Um, Confessional that look like this, you stand out like this. The priest would be in the center, behind a grill. The um, penitents would be one on one side or one on the other side. We have ours is down at the back of the church, boys and girls. As you're leaving church, it's to the right. You'll, you'll see a door, you'll see a, two doors. Um, now, many times you'll be receiving confession. For your first confession, you'll be up in the altar area. Uh, for your other confessions through St. Joseph on the Brandywine, many times the priest will come over to our religious education classes and they'll go into a particular classroom. You'll line up and we're back to the, the baptismal font. And many times the priest uses a shell to pour the water over you. It's a very symbol of a, of a shell. Holy oils, that's back in the back of the church. I think it's called an ambry that holds the oil, holy oils. And you'll see the three different holy oils before Easter. Each church receives holy oil. So we're back, the, uh, back to our, um, oh my golly, we're back to our um, beginning again. So you'll go over these, boys and girls. I just realized it's um, what time it is. Okay. This is our, our, look at your saints now. We have the Holy Family. Right after um, Christmas, our first Sunday was the church, of, uh, the Mass of the Holy Family. We have Jesus, Mary, and Joseph working together. Color these boys and girls. Get out your paints. Get out your magic markers. I've been using colored pencils. I have these nice, soft colored pencils now. This is St. Paul. I want you to be aware of St. Paul. We're going to be talking a great deal about him. Because we usually have readings from St. Paul at most every single Mass. We're still sitting when St. Paul is read. But he was a great, great um, evangelist. He traveled so much for Christ. He wasn't always, he wasn't always for Christ. At first, Paul didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. But when Jesus appeared to him, Jesus appeared to Paul after his resurrection Paul knew that he had been wrong. Soon he gave his life to Christ and spread the good news everywhere he went. 
St. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You can say that yourself. And he's writing to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. We can say the same thing. I can, each one of us say it ourselves. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. It's not your strength, boys and girls. So whatever you do, the accomplishments you have, thank, thank Jesus for them. Jesus, thank you. Blessed Mother, thank you. Dear God, help me be as brave and dedicated as St. Paul. So we'll learn a great deal about, about St. Paul. And the very end now, boys and girls, we're at 30 minutes, and we usually try to keep this to 30 minutes. I'm going to um, read from Moses. Now, I'm going to read a little bit from Moses, then we'll end. We'll have our ending prayer. And if you would like to stay on, I'll continue reading the rest of Moses. If not, boys and girls, can you go over Moses with your parents? Your parents can tell you all about Moses. If there's anything they question and you want to look up, you want to look up in a child's Bible, you want to look up in a, um, a family Bible. But Moses is who we're going to cover today. And I'm going to continue reading until the end. We'll, we'll, we'll just have one, two. Oh, here we go. Okay, this is what I want to this is what I want to read to you today. Or maybe I should wait until next week. Maybe let's wait until next week. But we have Mo, we have Moses Moses being found as a baby. See how much you can learn from your parents this week. And then we'll read this next week. This is Moses as a baby. Looks like he's being found, doesn't he? You don't see babies in the basket on the river. This is called the uh, burning bush. This is fire, boys and girls. But the tree isn't being burned. And you know who that gentleman is? It's Moses. God is speaking to Moses. Here, Moses is leading his people out of Egypt. Remember when Joseph and the coat of many colors and his family came down to Egypt? The Egyptians, the Israeli, the Hebrews became very, very strong and but, and, and the Pharaoh and his, um, the country feared them. They feared their strength. So he, they made them slaves. And But God wanted his people free. And he led them out of Egypt across the Red Sea. I'm sure you've heard this. When the waters rose, even the, the sand down at the bottom was totally dry. This is their wanderings. They wandered for 40 years and then they went into the promised land. Bread from heaven and Moses receiving the Ten Commandments while in the desert. So we'll we'll hold this till next time. But but um, in the meantime, boys, you'll see how much you know you can learn this week about Moses. Will you do that, Moses? Okay, I'm on that song at the end now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> now, at night time. And we always want good dreams going to bed, boys and girls. We're not in control of our dreams. but um, So we always want to go to bed with a prayer on our lips, um, asking Jesus to protect us during the night, ask our guardian angel to protect us. So this is the same song, but at nighttime. Good night, Jesus. This night's for you. It's all I dream, all I say, and all I do. Good night, Jesus. This night's for you. It's all I dream, all I say, and all I do. That would be in your dreams. All I dream, all I say, and all I do. Good night, Jesus. All right. Goodbye, boys and girls. This was always pleasant being with you. And may you have a good week and find out about Moses. In the name of, oh, we've always said the name of the Father. Bye-bye, boys and girls.